In this video, we are going to talk about how coastal processes result in coastal erosion, submersion, and salt water intrusion. These are the specific learning outcomes. Now, I want you to study these two maps. Pay particular attention to the outlines of the continents. These outlines of the islands are called coastal areas. Coastal areas are transition areas between land and sea. These are sometimes called as coasts or coastlines. Coasts have many different features, such as caves and cliffs, beaches and mad flats. External forces such as tides, waves, and water currents flow shape the land to form these coastal features. Some coasts are also changed by the flow of glaciers, which are huge rivers of ice and lava from volcanoes. Humans have also built coastal features such as harbors, coastal defenses, and artificial islands. These pictures show the effect of coastal erosion leading to the destruction of houses and other infrastructures along the coasts and the steepening of the coastal area. Now, there are three dominant coastal processes. The first one is coastal erosion. Coastal erosion, based on the name itself, is the wearing away of the land by sea, and this is done by destructive waves. There are five common processes that cause coastal erosion. First is what we call corrosion. Creation is a process of erosion which refers to the strictly mechanical wear of bedrock by moving dretrital and other materials during their migration, downslope under the influence of gravity, and the further transportation of erosional agencies such as running water, moving ice, or wind. In simple words, when waves pick up beach materials such as stones and hurl them at the base of a cliff, curation happens. Curation looks like this and it is a serious problem. Next is what we call coastal abrasion or just abrasion. Abrasion occurs as breaking waves which contain sand and large fragments smash along the cliff and wear it away. It is also referred to as the sand paper effect, and it looks like this. As you can see, the waves carry the large fragments and destroy the coast. Now there is another thing called attrition. Attrition is the process when waves bump rocks and pebbles against each other, leading to the eventual breaking of the materials. Here, it is basically the waves that cause the damage. Just to clarify the difference between the two, abrasion and attrition, abrasion is when two surfaces rub against each other, and attrition is where they bounce or smash against each other. The next process is called the hydraulic action, Okay, still under the coastal erosion. It is simply the effect of waves as they heat cliff faces. When fast-moving water strikes riverbanks and large rocks, air is forced into the cracks. This puts great pressure on the surrounding rock, which can progressively crack, break, and splinter. This is followed by sudden decompression, which can happen with explosive force. Here, the released air simply blows away pieces of rocks. Cracks are gradually widened so that subsequent waves compress more air, which increases the explosive force of its release. And last, under coastal erosion, we have the corrosion or solution. This involves dissolution by weak acids such as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, it turns into a weak acid called the carbonic acid. Now, several rocks such as limestone are vulnerable to this acidic water and will dissolve into it. You have to remember that the rate of dissolution is affected by the concentration of carbonates and other minerals in the water. So, as it increases, the solution becomes slower. 
The next coastal process is the movement of sediments along the coast. As wave crashes on the shore, the water pushes sediment up the beach and then pulls it back down the beach as the water slides back down. If the waves do not come in parallel to the beach, longshore transport, or what we call littoral drift, of sand occurs. Last, we have the coastal deposition. So when waves lose their capacity to carry or transport sediments because of reduction in energy, they can and will drop or deposit its sediment load. Okay? So waves that do not have the capacity to transport sediments and which results to sediment deposition and accumulation are called constructive waves. You have to remember that deposition happens when the swash or the waves that rushes inland is stronger than the backwash or the waves rushing back to the sea. Deposition can occur as waves enter areas of shallow water sheltered areas like coves and bay, little or no wind, and there is a sufficient supply of sediments. Now, it must be emphasized that the waves lose kinetic energy to transport the sediment load for coastal deposition to happen.